literally an omen of death a lot of the times associated with the devil. <laughs> me, I've got cold chills all over me now. Don't make me do this. <gasps> Lord. Mm. One of the guys started bleeding from his nose. I don't know where, yeah. Emma? What the f is that? <laughs> what? Hey, put step 10. Thank you so much for tuning into Amy's Crypt. Tonight, Jar and I are investigating the Viaduct Tavern in London. There's a lot of history associated with this place and a lot of hauntings. This is actually the first video you guys will see from our UK series and actually the first one that we are filming. So I can't tell you how excited I am. I've actually been here before, but I never got the chance to investigate this. So it's like a dream of mine to come back and investigate this place. Really excited for tonight, so stay tuned. London is one of the world's oldest great cities, a sprawling metropolis layered in history and a place with ghosts on almost every corner. But it is the history surrounding the corner where the Viaduct Tavern today stands that has given this simple pub many reasons to be haunted. The tavern itself dates back to 1869, when it was first opened following the nearby Holborn Viaduct. It now remains as the last example of a true gin palace in the city of London, a lavish drinking hole built for upper society. Though due to the affordability of gin, those from poorer walks of life would also frequent the tavern too. What makes this bar so famed in the paranormal community is just beneath its floors. During more modern times, a number of cells were uncovered underneath the tavern. Their existence remains a complete mystery, yet it is speculated that they could have once been a part of one of two different prisons that formerly sat upon the the land the viaduct tavern was built on. The first of these is the Giltspur Street Compter, a debtor's prison that existed between 1791 and 1853. The next being the notorious Newgate Prison, which was in use from 1188 to 1902, a prison that was so old it was destroyed and rebuilt numerous times and boasted such poor living conditions. It remains infamous to this day as one of the most cruel hellish places that ever existed within London. So cruel in fact that it its cells were more like dungeons, and it even gave birth to the legend of the Black Dog of Newgate, a dark or even demonic omen that is still persistent today. The underground cells of the Viaduct Tavern are claimed to be one of the most haunted areas of the building, and one that we will investigate tonight, though we will also look to visit the building's upper floors, where a brothel once ran, a murder took place, and violent poltergeist activity has been reported. But first, we commence our investigation on the ground floor pub at the Viaduct Tavern, where a mischievous drink stealing ghost is claimed to exist, and some of the bar's current staff have experienced some strange and scary moments. On the main bar here, it says that he's haunted by one of the judges that you can see around the faces. He says that that's the one that owns the main bar. It's basically it's reported that customers have their drinks moved or like find them in different places. You know, it's like touched by them, like somewhere or whatever. The first month I started working, uh, I was doing delivery downstairs. And we have a hatch to bring barrels down, so I'm downstairs by myself and um, nobody else in the pub. And um, where the lady's toilet is, that's where the fire exit goes. And I heard the end dryer going up by itself repeatedly. So I like that spooked me up a little bit and I just came back upstairs. Two of my colleagues um, were having a drink after working here. When they went and turned off the light, uh, they heard footstep approaching them and they stopped. They turned the light back on and when they turned the light back on, the um, footstep became more heavy, like someone was running towards them. But was nobody there. Guys, I cannot stress to you how excited I am to be back here in the Viaduct Tavern. I was here a couple of years ago, and this was towards the very start of my Amy's Crypt journey. I had less than a thousand followers, a thousand subscribers at that time, and I didn't have any resources or weight behind me to get into a place like this. I still made a video about it because I love the place, but now I'm actually here and I'm doing a proper investigation. I've got full access to all the haunted places. And I just want to say thank you to you all for the support. It means everything to me. You know, you've supported me all these years throughout this journey and now we're back in the UK. How do you feel being back? It does feel cool to be back and it feels cool to have it to ourselves. Yeah, last time we were here it was full of patrons and it was noisy. So it's really cool that we've got this place to ourselves. And we've got access to the upstairs as well, which is cool. I know, I never thought that we would get that. I'm shook, I'm like, 
This is so cool. So this is the bar, Gin Palace. Freaking love it. I am gonna run ghost tube while we're here because you know this area is said to be haunted by a very thirsty ghost. Doesn't the ghost like steal people's drinks or something as well? Like Yeah, how bloody cheeky is that? <laughs> and we're rolling. Hearing some clicking back here, but it could just be general bar noise, you know? Plus we are in London. We're waiting for the sun to fully go down, but the street's out there. So we're probably gonna get some noise here and there. And we're rolling. And we're rolling. First thing I wanna point out is this beautiful picture, which has a bullet hole in it. Yes, a bullet hole from World War One. Look at that bloody thing, eh? World War One. What? As in, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was from a World War One soldier who was here and discharged their weapon in the bar. So it was around that era. So it just shows how. I mean, this place is way older than just World War One, but it's kind of cool that it's still there, and you can see the original hole as well on the roof, and that's a ricochet. Ah. Yeah. Cool. So that's original bullet hole ricochet. Another thing that's original and even older than that is this. Ooh. I'm guessing that's a sensor light that just flicked on behind me. This is the original ticket booth. So the owners of the establishment were paranoid that staff would steal money like under the bar. Just that could be relevant to the prison. We'll get into that. If um, there is someone here and you want to communicate, um, I'm sorry that happened to you, but could you share your name with us? I prefer to introduce myself. I'm Amy, this is Jared. If we could have your name, we'd appreciate that. We also, while we were talking to the owners, before we actually got the word abuse, so we've been getting a lot of negative, violent sort of words come through, which could be because of the prison that used to be on this area. But what I was going to explain about this is the owner of the establishment when this was a uh, gin palace was paranoid that people behind the bar would steal money. So what they'll do is as you entered the bar, they would sell you tokens that you could exchange at the bar for drinks. And this is where the manager would sit and collect and dish out the tokens, I guess. If there's a thirsty ghost here, give me a sign. Come close to these lights in my hand. I'll make you a drink. I don't know if I'm allowed to do that. But I'll do it. What? <laughs> well, yeah, what would you like to drink? Can you tell me? Surely it's got to be gin, right? Gin was the drink of the day because it was so affordable. What the f was that? That was not street noise. That was like on the staircase going up, I reckon. Yeah, it was. That was where that... Oh, what, what it say? They're here. It's a greeting. Oh, hello. Yeah, come this way. Maybe it's time we just head up. So this is a staircase that leads up to lofts. It did sound like it came from over here, didn't it? Yeah. Also, the loft area is super haunted. Poltergeist activity. A lot of weird, crazy stuff happens up there. I say we just continue the walk through. Now we just, do you want to do that Jared? Yeah? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Follow the noise. After hearing some loud noises that seemed to come from the staircase leading to the upper floors of the building, we decide to move our investigation up towards the sounds. These upper floors of the Viaduct Tavern are said to be rather active. One of the prostitutes got murdered, because back in the day, like early 1900, uh, upstairs in the first floor floor, uh, used to be a brothel and opium den. This area's past could account for its hauntings, which at times have been on the more aggressive side, with a former landlord's daughter claiming to experience poltergeist activity here in the 1980s. One day she claimed to be reading a newspaper alone in a room when she heard footsteps coming up the stairs, saw the door swing open and had the paper snatched from her hands and thrown to the ground by someone completely unseen. Following this event, she then heard the same footsteps descend the stairs away from her. In addition to this story, others have also heard and seen a little girl in the area. And what we would document in this space throughout the night would be truly disturbing. Okay, so we've reached 
a level which is mostly just storage now. We're gonna keep going up because apparently they're the spookier floors. No way! You got that word today for patrons, didn't you? Killed. Killed? No, I had killed. Okay, guys. The upstairs apparently used to be a brothel. There is a ghost on the more violent side up here. And I was up here earlier today doing a ghost tube for my patrons and YouTube members. And I went in a particular room and it said killed which matches up to the theory of the spirit up here that it was a, a murdered prostitute, allegedly. Did you hear something up there? I thought I had, yeah, like, while you were talking. Something scraping? Yeah. Go, let's go up. I'm so sorry that something bad happened to you. I didn't want to, like, interfere with what you were saying, but I didn't hear that. It sounded like something sliding along the floor. Hear that. Hear that. I think this is just the space but might have come from in here <laughs> it's just the door it's it's like... the shit <laughs> okay I'm good <laughs> up here's also where I had the response killed today I also, something that happened was I had the word play and I couldn't make sense of it. Stairs. Play. Oh, we've come here to play, all right. Now that I've interviewed the general manager, he said there's a little girl that haunts up here. Another one, it's the ghost of a little girl that died in the cell downstairs. It was a prisoner because she stole um, another 13 year old dress, 13 years old girl dress. So she got locked up in the cellar downstairs and she died there. And then she says she's haunting um, the first four floors. So I kind of think that's interesting. I didn't know there was kids peaceful. here before that. Peaceful. Maybe the child's at peace, but I don't know that there's someone up here who was murdered that is, you know? Yeah, I guess if you're murdered, do you ever really make peace with that? I wouldn't. I also just want to point out there is a coin here on that just beside you. Oh, yeah. And I know people leave that for offerings to the spirits a lot. So these are the areas where most activity centers. This floor and the next one up. It's also where there's the best view of where a lot of people were executed. Look at this window. There's a water fountain over here. And that is where they believe the public gallows were set up and the Newgate prison, which, you know, they say the cells downstairs are connected to and part of. They did over 1,000 executions, all hangings. So you can imagine the death and the energy that's left just across the street from this place. It's so weird how like these days, it's like a fountain with just people walking past. No one really knowing that that's the site of so many deaths, you know what I mean? Well, it's just two guys walking past now and people driving past, you know what I mean? It's just like... Did you hear something? No. I just heard a bang. I thought it was behind me, but... Was that you? I didn't hear it again. No, there's like movement. There's banging on the... Is there someone up here? Where are you? Can you tell me? And people driving past, you know what I mean? It's just like... And people driving past, you know what I mean? It's just like... Beep, bum. Beep, bum. I'm pretty sure this floor with the wooden floorboards, this is where Lorenzo was saying this is the floor where they have a lot of activity. Upstairs is where I had the first response that said killed, so I'll show you where that room was. That's so weird. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna to need to try to replicate that because earlier today I had a magnetic spike in this area. Then I walked into that room and it said killed on ghost tube. Okay, maybe there is something here. So this was the room I was in. No, 
Now we've heard there's somebody up here who can move objects. Stroke. Lorenzo was saying that people get, he didn't use the word stroke, but he did say people get like touched, grabbed, um, poked. So that's kind of weird. I don't want to say, can you stroke one of us? Because this was a brothel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a bit weird. <laughs> Okay, I've heard that there's somebody up here who can move objects. Can you move the table? Can you move the door? Can you touch one of us? Can you make a sound on the floor? I would shit my pants if that door moved on its own. Tell you what, at this point, I would just be loving it. <laughs> what happened up here? How old are you? Is there a, a child here? What's with the creepy light fixtures in this place? <laughs> They're not even that creepy, Jared. <laughs> Interesting so far. I think maybe we should check out the cells as well though. Yeah, I guess you can't do the Viaduct Tavern and not go into the cells. That's what this place is famous for, right? Oh yeah. The cells are said to be the most haunted area. They're connected to the old prisons here and they were very ferocious, very tragic places of torment. I mean, they definitely look haunted. I can vouch for that. We went down there today and they're definitely very creepy. All right, we're heading to the cells. You. Yeah, I'm, we are heading to this. Emma? Thank you so much, Emma. Okay, it could be one of the ladies who used to work here. Maybe they were murdered here. Or it could be the little girl. I don't actually, no one has names for these people. Emma, can you tell us something else about yourself? Like your age, how old are you? We're not here to harm you. Again, my name is Amy and this is Jared and we've come a very long way to visit you. And we would just love to talk. Well, we're gonna head downstairs into the cells. It's probably not your favorite place, but if you wanna come join us, you're more than welcome. We now made our way back down to reach the underground area of the tavern containing the mysterious prison cells, which could have belonged to the historic former prisons of London. This area is said to be one of the most haunted places in the building and sometimes exhibits rather scary activity. A former landlord claimed to have had the lights turned off and a door slammed shut on him while down in this cellar, only to hear a disembodied voice whisper in his ear, it's just you and me down here now. We were also told some other disturbing stories about these cells by the current manager. They say they are connected to Newgate Prison. So in front of the pub is the Old Bailey, the criminal court, and um, underneath the floor here, like underneath the bar, uh, that's where old prison cell from Newgate Prison. Um, when, they be, when they were building the beer cell, uh, the, the cellar downstairs, they knocked down the wall and they found out that there was another room behind it. Uh, that's where they found the prison cells down there. I had um, a few, mo like a month ago, um, it was another uh, ghost hunting event. So we locked ourselves, it was like 2 a.m. In, in one of the cell. We call our ghost, basically. With a, with a Ouija board or something, we're completely beach, pitch dark. One of the guys started bleeding from his nose. I don't know, uh, yeah. We take customers downstairs because we're known for the prison cells and everything, and um, they ask us to go downstairs. And I had these two girls that um, they asked to be locked inside the cells. After a few moments, one of them just bashed out the door and screaming because she felt, she felt something. She started screaming and everything, and she wanted to come back upstairs. Heading down to the cellar where the cells are. It's intimidating down here. And they have a lot of historical pictures and write-ups about the Newgate prison down here. Even the black dog. Oh, that is creepy. So what is the black dog like demonic or what is it exactly? So black dog is a popular thing in British folklore. Literally an omen of death. A lot of the times associated with the devil. Kind of a bad bad thing and it was associated with the Newgate prison because it was such a bad bad place to be horrible there's a noise up there as well 
behind me. Yep, little crack. I feel like we've been getting a lot, yeah, a lot of that. I don't know if the mic's picking it up, but lots of thuds. Staircase noise, huh? Yeah, on the staircase, yeah. B, horrible. B, horrible. B, horrible. This here was Newgate Prison though, and what's interesting, especially in this picture here, you can see the curvature of the cells, and we will see that down here. It's bleak, it's bleak. Warm fire duck jail. <laughs> We're literally going into the fridge, so it's chilly. This might be a bit noisy in there too, from memory. Woo, cold. This one? <laughs> I think both these doors have cells in them. Oh, let's go in that one because we'll show them the curvature first. Oh, so you see this arch here that I'm talking about? Yeah, there's cells in here. Yeah, that's so weird. So right now I'm standing in one of the cells. You can see, yeah, the curvature of the ceiling. So it's so weird. It's like you've got a hotel pub upstairs and underground you've just got like these old hundred year old prison cells it's pretty weird hundred year old dude this could be way older that prison was built in the 1100s <laughs> it was almost 800 years old when it was demolished tomato tomato hundred thousand same thing <laughs> oh f this <laughs> to get in you have to walk right past a noose very fitting since the gallows were just outside I'm guessing other investigators have been down here. We've got a bunch of candles. There's a Ouija board here. And there's a black scrying mirror. Oh yeah, that's cool. Oh, I love that. All right, my... Her footsteps in. Did you? Yeah. I can just hear the fridge. No, I heard footsteps in. Ooh, cool. It's weird because this is like thick brick. Literally, yeah. Alright, my... Alright, my... Alright, my... Okay, I'm gonna put Ghost Tube on the floor. I'm putting it on the floor. Where? <laughs> okay, my name is Amy, this is Jared. We've come a long way to visit you. Can you tell us where you are from? Can you tell us your name? Can you tell us why you're in here? Or why you were sent here? Can you give this guy a nosebleed? What? Apparently they can do that. And I don't want to have one because that's gross. <laughs> Fine, you can give me a nosebleed, hit me in the face, whatever. <laughs> we just need a sign that there's somebody here. So this steel is like nearly a thousand years old. Well, that's the thing. Nobody knows why this prison cell is down here. Was it from the debtor's prison? Was it from Newgate prison? Was it from a prison at all? There was two very, uh, large notorious prisons right in the vicinity of the viaduct tavern and a lot of people believe that this tavern was built over the top of one of them and that's why these cells are here but they literally found them when they knocked down a wall they knocked down a wall down here and was like holy crap there's an extra couple of rooms down here and some of them have cells what the heck yeah it's very dank is dank the right word is that a word yeah that'll fit Creepy. Yeah, not pleasant. That came from the fridge room. Obviously the refrigerator is running, but that was a clear think, you know what I mean? Can 
Can you move the noose in front of Jared? All right, guys. New experiment. Amy just came up with this. We don't know if this will work, but here we go. So there's a little old oh, Ouija. Okay. okay, the spirit's approved. <laughs> Down for it. Yes. So there's an old Ouija board here um, that a previous paranormal team must have left here or something like that. Rather than use the planchette and put our finger on it, we're going to spit a coin on it. How does that sound? And we're going to ask the spirits when the coin's spitting to influence it and make it move on the board. So maybe you can just tell us if someone's here or give us a sign that you're here. Tell us that you're here. Tell us your name. Anything would be great. L. That, that's like it landed straight on L too, huh? Yeah. L. Okay, L. Uh, can you give us another letter that maybe spells something out for us? L9 or goodbye. Mm. No, don't go anywhere. We want to know more about you. L. Floor. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen anyone do this. It's probably a dumb idea, but... I? So we've got L, I. B. Live. 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 Okay, sure, it might just be the way I spin it, but that does take the bias out of, you know, with one of us moving it subconsciously or otherwise, you know what I mean? I sort of like it. It did spell live. Live. I know I live, if you're watching live. <laughs> that's kind of creepy. Yeah, it is. Oh, uh, that's kind of weird. We have a live. Lost. Lost. Uh, can we help you find your way? We do have a live in our life, so anytime we touch a Ouija board, it seems to get personal. What did it say? More. More. They want to keep going. You're just going to keep getting personal with me, though. I want a name. Give me a name through Ghost Tube and we'll keep going. All right, we're going to go now. Can you tell us goodbye? J. Hi right, guys, that's kind of interesting. I don't know how valid that experiment was. I just came up with it in my head because I saw a coin and a little Ouija board. There's no plan chat down here. And I don't know if it means anything. Very odd. Uh, I could almost assign personal meaning to it, but I kind of don't want to. What do you guys think? Leave a comment. Uh, I think we've got more work to do down here though. I really feel like this is an interesting spot to investigate. At this point, we decided to return to the upper floors where we feel as though we had already documented a decent amount of activity. As we set up for an SD session, we captured some moments on camera that were pretty creepy. Okay, so that is drawing. Testing, testing, central check, check, check. All right. I just heard kill her. What? Like, kill her. <laughs> like with an English accent? Yeah. <gasps> Cat ball's going off too. Is that rolling? Yes, they're all Is rolling. Is SLS rolling? Yes, they're all rolling. And that camera's rolling? And that's all rolling. Okay. Okay, Crypt Keepers. We're upstairs at the Viaduct Tavern now. I'm gonna do an Estes. We've had a few strange responses up here and I was just getting ready to do the session. Got my blindfold here, which I'll be wearing, noise cancelling headphones while I listen to a spirit box. Jared's gonna ask questions, I won't be able to hear him. I'm just gonna say what I hear come through. Put my headphones on just to test, and I heard in a very British accent, killer. I thought I just heard something out there as well. I didn't hear it, but we've got a, uh, a SLS camera set up there with cat balls going um, in the hallway, and they were going off just a moment ago, so. Honestly, a bit nervous to do this. The responses we've had up here, killed, murdered, allegedly women were killed here. This was a brothel back in the day. There's been poltergeist activity up here. I would love for something to be moved. I would love for something to happen. But let's see if there's someone around who wants to talk to me. So anyone here that wants to communicate with us, can you come up to the lady sitting in front of me here? You might be able to um, generate some sounds that she can hear. 
I do not want. You don't want to talk to me. It's haunted. That's good to know. That's why we're here. Can you tell us who haunts this place? Walking. Are you walking towards me? Smack. Is that a threat? What do you mean by that? Is that what happened to you? Don't wait. I'm not waiting. What well, can you tell me about this room? What happened in this room? Throw in a punch. Is there a fight here? Can you tell me about the fight? I can't. You can't tell me about it. Why not? Stopping me. It's so weird. I feel like I'm talking to someone that was maybe hit or... Who's stopping you? What's his name? Him. What's his name? Yeah. Why was he hitting you? Just heard laughing. Can you make a noise in this room for me to let me know that you're here? Her hands. What about him? Can you touch her hand? Use her nails. Okay, this is getting really, really creepy for me now. What about her hands? Bitch. Excuse me? They were nurtured. Can you tell me how many spirits are lingering up here? Dispute. What was the dispute about? What, what was the fight over? Husband is gone, maybe? Or husband's gun? I don't know. This is really, really weird. It's like someone's telling me about a domestic dispute that happened or something like that. Is that the gist of it? Is that what you're telling me? Yes. <gasps> Amy, mate. Yeah, that's Amy. She, um, she's happy to talk to you. She's your mate, I suppose. Are you able to go into that hallway for me? There's some devices in there that if you touch, they might light up. And it lets me know that you're here. I don't want. You don't want to do that. Why not? He. What about him? Let me see her. Who do you want to see? Can you tell me if there's any children here? Uh huh. So are there children here or not? Or have I been speaking to a child this whole time? Could have been speaking to a child. Jared, I don't know if you're like near me, but I've got that feeling, you know, when someone's like in your personal bubble, it just feels like there's someone close to me. Are you touching her? My ticket fell. What, what was the ticket for? What ticket? Hmm? Lord? Yeah. Is that you? Is that you? Who was that? It's me. Jeez. Okay guys, we have Rampod down there with an SLS watching it. Can you give me a name of who that is? He's under. That is really creepy now the cat was going off. All right. Should I be worried or are you friendly? Like, are you a friend or a foe? Jump. 
Have you made me jump? Yeah. All hope is gone. Oh, that's a bit depressing. Can you Burden. Tell, can you tell me about the cells downstairs? Why are they there? Many. Yeah, there's lots. Can you tell me about them though? Why are they down there? What happened in them? That cat ball is still going off. It's freaking me out. This is very random, not what I'm hearing, but I feel like I just got a very sudden toothache down here. Yeah. That's abnormal for me. It's really weird. Did someone do something to your teeth or your face? Broke. Broke your teeth? Mother will be something. Who's doing that now? Someone laughing again. Are you having a joke with me? Can you make that, that flashing light stop in a hallway? Can you make it stop for me? Oh my God, it turned off. Thank you. Are you still there? Waiting. What are you waiting for? Her. What do you want her to do? What do you want her to do? Can you touch her? Her. Yeah, her, can you touch her? Touch her on the shoulder, just there. Sorry. That's all right, what are you sorry for? Pavement. <laughs> Was that you? This Estes session provided many intriguing results that were even paired with some of our devices triggering. The responses were definitely eerie, dark, and seemed to allude at some kind of domestic violence which may have taken place. But what do you make of these responses? Leave a comment below. In addition to this, as Jared and I were packing up to move and discussing how we were about to debrief from the session, I personally heard a noise coming from down the hall, which sounded like furniture being dragged along the floor. Thankfully, we still had a camera rolling to capture this noise. Do you want to debrief on this bit? As I said, I don't really like to debrief because I feel like... Did you say something? No, the cap was going off. Oh, I thought I heard something down there. As I said, I don't really like to debrief because I feel like. As I said, I don't really like to debrief because I feel like. As I said, I don't really like to debrief because I feel like. Because we had already captured so many compelling moments upstairs in this room, we decided to leave a ghost tube SLS camera rolling while we investigated the cells downstairs. What we documented during this time just added to what we had already captured that night. All right, why is this next session particularly creepy? So we just packed up upstairs. We've left a, a SLS camera and a few cat and stuff up there. And we thought we'd check in with the, um, 
the owner of the building, he's just, or sorry, the manager of the building, who's sort of our chaperone tonight. And he said, we earlier on, we explained to him about our apps ghost tube and we showed them to him and he was particularly interested in them. That's a good omen. <laughs> anyway, he, um, he was interested in them, so he was playing around with them while we were downstairs, apparently filming in the, in the cells. And he said, while we were down there, it said basement and Jared. So naturally... We're going to send Jared down there. Of course. I just don't know how I feel about that. It's so weird. So it said my name and basement while we were down in there. It like, knew you were down there. It wants you. So weird. It's weird because I didn't get any... I don't recall getting any vibes down there while we were in there. But now I feel different about it, you know? All right, guys, we've got all sorts of stuff. Like, we're going all out for this little cell. I don't know what we're going to do, whether we lock Jared in by himself or I stand there. I don't know. But we're just going to throw everything that we have at the cell. And hopefully we get some ghostly activity. You ready, Jared? No. <laughs> I really don't want to do this. Come on, I'm Why really... did my name come up? Why me? Why couldn't it have said Amy or something? I wish it said me. I'm going to be just next door. I'm going to be in, if it's a cell, I don't know. I don't think as many people investigate that, but who knows? Maybe there's activity. So you'll be able to hear me. I'll be right next door. You're just locked in here with all the cells and the noose. Great. That makes me feel better about it. What are your last words, Jared? Don't make me do this. Crypt Keepers, if you're watching this, you better like the video for Jared. Yeah, please. Like, I'm doing this for you. Not right. for you, Amy. <laughs> I'm going to be in the next cell over. So call out if you need anything. Let me lock you in, though. Goodbye. Wish me luck. No! Hmm. This seems welcoming. Oh, God. All right, guys. I mean, oh, it's pitch black. Is anyone in here with me? Hello? All right, guys, we've also got a thermal camera set up over here as well, so you should be able to see me. Why do I get myself into these things? Jared? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, just checking. I've turned my lights off, so I'm in complete darkness now, and it's freaking creepy. Yours is creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm creeped out. Are you not? Yeah. I'm not in the cells. Can you run Ghost Tube Vox? Okay, I'm hitting record on a Ghost Tube Vox session now. If there are any spirits down here, we feel like you are calling out to Jared. You wanted him down here. We brought him back. He's here for you. Holy crap, what is that? Sounds like the subway, yeah. Is there anybody in here, this cell with me right now? I thought that said Amy then. You're in my cell. Can you tell me your name? Yeah. Me, I've got cold chills all over me now. I don't know if it's cause it just said that, but... Are you in there with Amy? Can you tell us your name? Can you hear that? Yeah, like thumping? Yeah. Hey, it just said... Can you tell us what happened in these cells? Where do these cells belong to? What prison? Can you tell us how many people are in these cells with us? Did somebody die down here? It's gone really quiet now, Ames. Like it's not saying anything. Yeah. Can you come back? I really want to talk to you. Are you still here? We'd love to talk to the little girl. How old are you? No, 
Can you tell us what you're doing down here? What was your crime? What were you charged with? Getting all cold in my back. You're getting all cold? On my back only. Right behind me. I can just see the subway going past. Okay, I'm gonna head into this next room here. I've got the keys here. Keys to get out of the cell. Little trigger object. If you wanna get out, you just gotta tell me where you are in the cell. I'll come bring the keys to you. Go get the man with the keys and you can get out. Can you tell me what this is here for? Guys, I'm guessing that's just a prop and not original. So I didn't hang anyone down here necessarily, but it doesn't make it any less creepy. It's gone a bit quiet now, Ames. Do you want me to come in there? That yeah. might stir something up. Yeah, come on. It's freaking so dark. Yeah, I can't see much. Okay, I'm coming in here. Maybe it'll help stir up activity. Uh, it seemed to like ramp up and then died off. And you said they thought that you heard my name at the beginning. I mean, yeah, it sounded like it. It could have been sound pareidolia maybe, but I thought it said your name. I couldn't hear well enough in the other cell to tell you what I heard, but that's pretty cool. Can you say my name again? What is particularly interesting about the whistle we captured onto audio here is that it is only present on the microphone attached to me. Despite having five other sources of audio recording in this same room, the whistle does not register on any of them. Adding further interest to this, right after this whistle was captured onto audio, I began to feel a coldness right behind me. Do you think these occurrences could be related? Oh yeah, I don't like it in here. Like as soon as I walked backwards into here, you know when like the hairs on the back of your neck stand up, like something doesn't feel right behind me. All right, there's two of us in here now. Is there anything you wanna to say to us? Do you know what or do you know who the black dog is? Can you make a noise for us? Ugh. Can you hit on something like that? We have to. You can take our energy, please. If you need some energy, draw from us. Maybe from our batteries. Or the power sources that we're holding. The keys are just sitting there on that shelf. If you want to go up and grab them, they're yours. I'll let you out of the cell. Can you give us a sign or we're going to have to leave? Can you move something? Can you throw something? Touch one of us? Move my hair? Do you know of the black dog? The black dog of Newgate? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
What? That made me jump. You haunted here or something? That made me jump so freaking much and then that voice, that was creepy as shit. That was unexpected. Well, especially because we weren't really getting anything. That was all just really quiet then. And then bang and a whole bunch of voices came through. It's so weird. <laughs> well, we can hear you now. Hi. Was that you that moved that in the other room there? Who was it? Do you think that could have been the next cell over? Where I, mean, I was? Were, it was? It was definitely in one of the next rooms. So it's either that room there, or it was in the cell where you were, which is just sort of behind that wall there. Hello? At this point, we decided to review the thermal camera we had rolling in the cell with us, but we did not see any anomalies of interest. So we decided it was time to take a stroll outside of the tavern to some of the sites of historical interest in the area we had been investigating all night. All right, guys, we're wrapping up. Night's finished. Still pretty freaking busy here in London, but we're on the street. We can't really investigate Hicksville, but I did want to bring you guys out here to a couple of points of interest. So the Viaduct Tavern is right next to me. Boom. This is the Giltspur Street Compter. Right, so this was one of the prisons in this area. It was a debtor's prison, it was a smaller prison, but the cells could have come from that. Nobody really knows, right? I'm gonna say, yes, there's a lot of history here. N not only just the history of the Viaduct Tavern itself, but all of London, like everywhere we, we're stepping our feet, it's like so much history. A history upon history, layers upon layers. And like, so this says demolished, right? So this is the site of where it used to be? Yes. So this building wouldn't have been here, there would have been a big prison here. And just across the street, Jared, are the gallows. But I just heard the creepiest thing ever. So I was doing a lot of research on the black dog of Newgate. It's this dark entity, could be like an omen of death or demonic. Apparently it's still in this area. I thought, you know, Maybe it was gone along with the prison, but no, this crossroads right here, it's... Sorry, I just heard a leaf in <laughs> blow in here and it freaks me out because I'm tall. The black dog freaks me out. Now, apparently if you cross this crossroad here and you see a dog or you hear a dog barking, you're next. It just marked you. And some of the, the guys that have been working here in the, the, the viaduct tavern, have heard dogs barking at night and the, it freaks them out, freaks me out. Should we cross the crossroads? Oh, yeah, and I mean, I'm sure people like would have dogs around here, but we are in a heavily dense city area. So there wouldn't be too many, I wouldn't think. Especially a big ass black dog by yeah. itself. Whoops. Okay, so we're at the tavern again. Woo! Uh, now we're gonna cross this hectic street to where the executions took place. A lot of the public hangings took place. Hear any dogs? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, no dogs, a lot of traffic. <laughs> but here we are, we're at the water fountain. They do say this was the site of the public executions, the public hangings and <sighs> It wasn't just the people being hanged who contributed to the death of this area, right? There was actually an incident in 1804 where a number of people got crushed. So these public hangings, that were the thing to go and do, as sick as that is. This particular hanging, three people were getting hanged. It drew a crowd of 40,000 people. People were crushed at this event. They reckon 20 to 30 people, although some accounts say 34 people died. It's pretty grotesque, but you've got to remember over a thousand people were hanged by the Newgate prison, whether that was publicly or otherwise. Now the Newgate prison would have been just over here. And it was huge, right? And then you've got the Viaduct Tavern on that corner. So to think prison, prison, gallows, the Viaduct Tavern's right in the middle of all that. How creepy is that? I guess it's no surprise and it could be haunting them, I suppose. Ooh. 
Is that it? That's it. So guys, we're at the site now where the new gate prison once stood literally across the road from the Viaduct Tavern. It's so close. So it makes me think, yeah, like it's possible that the cells down there were associated with this prison or at least the prison on the other side of the road. I don't know. Uh, it's also where the stories of the black dog, this demonic dark spirit originated. So I find that quite interesting. And it does make me wonder where the torturous conditions of this prison, you know, this place was essentially a huge dungeon. Like I've read so much about it and it's very, very dark. You know, picture like such an old prison, sure. But it just makes me wonder what about the building that stands on the land now? Do you guys think that that could continue to be haunted? Do you think that there might be activity? If anyone works there, I think this is the criminal court now. Yeah, if anyone works there, like, let me know if any strange stuff ever happens. I'd be super interested. All right, guys, I'm so excited that I got the chance to come back here. It got to a point where I thought I was never going to get back to the UK and I love it here so much. And I especially wanted to investigate somewhere in London. The guys here at Viaduct Tavern, they've been awesome to me, letting me in, giving me free run of the place as well to investigate. That is so freaking cool. And I just, I'm so thankful. I really, really wanted to investigate somewhere in London on this trip. And it was kind of hard. A lot of places were very expensive or they weren't open into, you know, the ghost hunting type thing. But just seriously guys, get ready because this trip is gonna be massive. And when I say massive, I mean it. We have more prisons, dungeons, really scary, demonic, dark ritual type places and we have castles which i'm most excited about and castles like a massive castle to ourselves overnight it's gonna be great so seriously make sure that you're subscribed staying tuned we also have plenty more uh locations from our u.s trip still to come some of them were traumatizing as well so get excited for those <laughs> but i do just want to say thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. That really helps me out. If you want to do more reading on this place, head to my website, amyscrypt.com. You can also follow us on social media at amyscrypt on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And I post bonus content on my YouTube and my Patreon, which are linked below. But thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time.